Someone recently got in touch about an oil diffuser that plugs into a USB supply and instead of being the type that is the water and you put the oil on then it creates the continuous haze, this version atomizes the oil directly. So I had a look on eBay and I found uh, either a knockoff or, or a variant on that called the Phytosun Aroms and they were selling these off quite cheaply. And if you look on Amazon, the reviews are not very good, it's like two star. And I get the feeling the reason for that isn't because the units are bad, but because the people using them um, aren't totally au fait with what's involved. So let me bring in a black background and I'll see if I can actually show you this working. So I'll zoom down a bit. And we'll see if I can actually get this to show up. Because what's going to happen is that when I plug this in, it's going to squirt little jets of oil out the end as a haze. Ready? Did that show up at all? I'm not sure if it did. I'll plug it in again and we'll see if it shows up. It certainly came out, but I don't know if it showed up on camera. Um, I'll find out when I look back at the video. So I'll zoom back out. No, I won't zoom back out here. This is a good size. Here is how you use it. It's got the USB port that can swing vertically or horizontally or fold up out the way. It's got the cover and then inside it's got this tiny little glass bottle and you pull down this trigger here to release the bottle. And uh, the bottle has a wick in it. You fill it with the essential oil. It comes a little funnel for that. And when you put it in, it actually presses up against a piezoelectric disc in here, much like the little um, sort of continuous vapor atomizers. Let's take a look inside and see what the circuitry is like. It's quite potent. It has a button. And if you, uh, when you turn it on, it lights up uh, red. I think yes, then it goes purple, then it goes blue, and then it goes off. And uh, the red is one pulse of oil, or a double pulse, it tends to put out, every 10 seconds, which is quite potent if you put, uh, well, I put in uh, Olbus oil, which is a thing sold in the UK, it's a sort of mentholy oil used for, uh, as an inhaler oil for when you've got congestion. Uh, but you put that oil in, and uh, it atomizes it into the air. And the other uh, sec settings you have are one pulse every uh, 30 seconds and one every minute. So inside, we have a little light guide here. I noticed uh, in another one I got that uh, that must have been missing because uh, the light was just spread all over the inside the unit. There seems to be various uh, versions of this. But they all look as though they contain the same circuit board. The little chip here um, and a transformer driving the piezoelectric transducer. Okay, well, tell you what. I'm going to take some pictures and then we'll explore the circuitry in this. One moment, please. And let's explore. So the back of the circuit board isn't that exciting. The only notable thing in the back is the uh, 100 microhenry inductor in series with the uh, ultrasonic transducer. The rest of it is just fairly chunky tracks, although I will say that the track layout isn't perhaps optimal. Let's go on to the front of the circuit board. It's busier. We have a 14-pin anonymous microcontroller. They could have used an 8-pin for this because all it's driving is two transistors, push-pull, uh, a button input, and then two LEDs. So given its power rails, that's just one, two, three, four, five other pins. They could have used an 8-pin chip. What's interesting about this design is that it's using a push-pull transformer. One connects the transformer's connect to positive, and these two transistors, which are standard NPN transistors, alternatively, alternately pull the A and B lines down to the negative rail. And in doing so, they create quite a strong AC signal here, which is then going to the ultrasonic transducer. The LEDs each have a 680 ohm resistor in series with them. There's a red one and a blue one. Um, and that is more or less it. Let's take a look. Oh, one thing here. This is a high current carrying conductor because this is actually switching one of the windings. It's odd that they've run it in a what looks like a power pin in the microcontroller and then sort of taken out through that pin. Not sure why they've done that. But generally speaking, you shouldn't really have the microcontroller on the same track as a 
sort of high current load. Also, this uh, little decoupling capacitor tucked up here is the only sort of filtering from USB supply to the microcontroller. Normally, they'd have maybe a 10 ohm resistor in series with that just to decouple the supply rail from the electrical noise created by switching this small transformer. Let's take a look at the circuit board. I shall zoom down just a tiny bit more. So here's the incoming USB supply. So we've got a 5 volt rail and the 0 volt rail. We've got the decoupling capacitor across that, and then we've got the microcontroller. The button is pulling down to the 0 volt rail. The LEDs are being switched positive so that they light because they're down to the negative rail, the 0 volt rail. I'll just draw the little beams of light there. And then it's driving the two transistors. The circuitry is incredibly simple, really. So the circuitry will be, the microcontroller will be triggering these transistors alternately to provide a push-pull effect to get good at, at throughput. I've coloured all the windings of this transformer orange so you know which ones are matched. This is separate. This is the little 100 microhenry inductor on the sort of higher voltage side of that transformer. And there is the piezoelectric transducer. The piezoelectric transducer is uh, quite interesting in its own right. Let me just grab that. I may have to zoom out for this. I will have to zoom out for this. Oh no, it actually does fit in. Okay, that's more or less it. No, I will zoom out a little tiny bit. So the piezoelectric transducer is unusual in that it's supported in this little springy plate, um, which is designed probably to give it uh, the ability to self-level to the top of the bottle um, and provide a slight pressure against that. Although if you look inside the unit itself, um, there is... The little thing that uh, locks the bottle in place is itself springy, just to put the correct pressure against that. Does it? Hold on. Let me just see if it goes up any further with the bottle out. Oh yes, it does. Yeah. So it is putting some pressure up, but this is providing the self-leveling. Self and the way this works, it's uh, one connection is onto the back metal plate, one connection is onto this metalized side of the piezoelectric material, and then it's basically a ring of the piezoelectric crystal that distorts with uh, the voltage going across it, so it basically oscillates at ultrasonic frequencies. And something you may not be able to see, actually you can faintly see it, is the tiny perforations through here. This is a sort of flat disc, um, but it's uh, got micro perforations on it, and the oil is uh, basically it, the movement of the ultrasonic disc uh, against the top of the wick on the bottle uh, forces little droplets of oil through and then the surface atomizes it as a as a cloud of vapor. Hopefully you saw that earlier on. I've not checked that bit of the video yet. But there we have it. Um, these things can be found on eBay at the moment. Phytosun Aroms being sold off in, in bulk. They're just trying to get rid of them, presumably. And it makes me wonder, is that purely because people didn't 100% know the, how to load them up properly with the bottle? Or is it because of that weirdness in the circuitry that they've actually not got great filtering there and that they've actually passed a current, a high current carrying pin uh, on a track that the microcontroller is referenced to and therefore there's a risk that, you know, that because there'll be a slight vo voltage variation along that track that it's upset in the processor. Who knows? But um, certainly I've been trying it out and it works so far. But that is it. The uh, Phytosun... A ROMs, an interesting little device. Uh, it works seemingly quite well. It's unusually high output. Uh, the bottle of oil doesn't last too long because it is so tiny, but this is basically designed to be filled with things like, say, oregano oil or the um, the Olbus or whatever you've got to atomize it into the air because I did notice uh, that the French seem to be into uh, atomizing uh, essential oils into the air for health reasons. I'm not sure if it really helps the health, but you never know, it might well do that. But that is it, the Phytosun Aroms Ultrasonic Oil Atomizer.